Finally, finally, I'm recording my first podcast in English. It's been so long. Podcast. I wanna, I wanted to record <laughs> this, and now I'm here with this a special guest to my first show. And this guy here is being as alumni, FGC Soccer alumni, got drafted. Now had a good season. Uh, Tux Tosa Tosa FC. Tucson. Uh, Tucson, Tucson <laughs> FC. But you can, yeah, I'm gonna put the subtitle here so you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> But Shaq, thank you for the invite, bro. How are you doing? How are you doing like back at FGCU? After four years, you come here to visit. How, how are you feeling? Good, because I get to see you, man. When I come to train, then just relax on vacation, uh, off season, train a little bit, see some of the guys that are still here. It's good, it's good. Know. Shaq, so I want to I wanna start with a question to you. We're going to go through pretty much your story here at FGCU uh, as a college athlete to transition to professional player you got drafted which was pretty cool did you expect to get drafted kind of i was hoping after i went to the combine in vegas that there is a high chance that i would have gotten drafted but i mean before i was already playing with nashville's like pdl team and i already knew the coaches and some of the general managers and they seemed to like me even before then so going into the draft i knew it was probably going to be me and uh one of my other friends that I played with that were probably going to end up getting drafted as like one of the Tennessee Tennessee kids. So after that, they called me when I, when it was their turn in the third round and after that it was What were what were you doing at when they like selected you like third round like Shaq Adams cuz I was 2K. I was <laughs> <laughs> you were playing 2K FIFA? Yeah, I was in the middle of basketball like basketball the 2K and I was playing with my friends. So I wasn't I was looking at the draft But, like, I wasn't really paying attention to the draft. And then when I knew, and then plus the draft was going kind of slow at the time, and it was, like, the third round. And I was just playing in the middle of the game, and I looked down at my phone, and I was like, who the heck from Nashville is calling me? And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, no way. And then I looked, answered the phone, and it was the manager. That's and good. that's how I knew it. But I was, I, I didn't even, I wasn't looking until after. You're not, like, looking at No, I wasn't, like, paying attention. Like, I was no, literally in the middle of a game. You're expecting, and I was just, like, 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 you know, like, okay, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah cool, cool. But, okay, so tell me, like... Because I'm from Brazil, and for me, like, coming to the U.S. wasn't something that I was uh, expecting until, like, a year and a half I got here. As an America, you, like, aim to play college soccer, right? It's something that you guys prepare since you are ninth grade or, like, first grade, whatever. Not first grade, first grade. So when is it? From high school. First grade in high school or, like, ninth grade, whatever. So when you like decided to come to FGCU, like what what like made you to to come here, and what what do you want to take out of college, out of college soccer before you got into it, and like how was your expectation before and after? Because your freshman year, you kind of played a little bit, but not as much as the other years. Like the process for me yeah. is just different because I didn't go to a school where it's like a lot of people are gonna expire to go to college, and then also not. You mean high school? Really, yeah, high school. Like it was not. Everyone, I mean, my grade grade kind of ch changed a little bit of people actually wanted to go to college and realize, oh, we have a chance. We're actually pretty educated and we can get a chance. But especially for soccer in my area, there's nobody that goes to college. I was probably one of the first people in my area to even get drafted, go to college. I mean, a lot of them went to college in my grade, but not a, that's not the mindset. So already it's just like, I mean, if I go to college, great. If not, I don't. Yeah, I'll just end up working. But I played club soccer, and my club soccer team, a lot of them were on more, like, the high end with, yeah. like, financially and stuff. Yeah. And all the players are good, too. So I, already, I was already on that club team. So after I played with them and got some interest from some colleges, I was like, oh, wait, maybe I can actually, like, I'm actually a so good what, player. So what, what, what grade were you when you were thinking, oh, actually, I could play? Literally 12th. 12th, so 12th grade, so like 12th grade, so junior 12th year high school? senior year. To, like, towards senior year, so until, so like... it was senior year that I was like, okay, I'm actually good enough to play. So before senior level. year, you didn't expect that actually you could no, play... No, my grades were like... My freshman, my freshman year in high school, my grades were very, very good. Like, I was 3.8. Like, 4.0, obviously, would be yeah. the best, but so 3.8. And then sophomore year, I was like, I don't care. Like, what am I doing this for? I mean, I'm just playing soccer for fun. I don't really aspire to go to college at this point. Same thing, kind of a little bit junior year. Junior year was the most important year, but I was still kind of on the edge of, like, I, I don't really care that much. And then senior year, 
when I played and went to like all these camps and stuff and realized like I was actually doing as good as some of the top players, then I was like, okay, there's a chance. So then I started actually trying to get my grades up. And I mean, I could have went to some very good schools. Like I could have went to Louisville, Kentucky and all these other schools, but my grades, because I slipped up before, yeah. kind of screwed me over for my senior year. But it was just like, that's how my high school was. They don't prepare us very well for college. For college, like you say, me like yeah. sports or? Like in both. Both, like, it's like academics. Yeah. yeah, so like academics is already not that good. And then sports, like I said, I was probably one of the only people in that area that is a professional soccer player. Where, where right is it, now. in Nashville? Then yeah, in Nashville, but it's in Antioch. So Antioch. a smaller area in Nashville. Okay, so it'll be like, okay. So that is so how like FGCU came your way because so it is crazy because now like you got drafted like you were playing pro like yeah. you actually got like some pretty good season pretty decent season scored a couple oh, goals yeah. was, was de pretty decent season for like first year and like so if senior you didn't even expect to like play college so even like even less that you imagine yeah. that you could be playing like pro right so like how FGCU came your way and like how you're expected yeah, to FGCU come to you want to say help me like. After my junior year, when I scored eight goals and had eight assists, and that was like my breakout year, I would say by far my best year. I was like, and then we had like Kamar and those guys, Nico, Albert, and I was performing just as well they did in the previous year. So I'm, and they were getting drafted and a lot of people getting interest agents. And I'm like, all right, I did just as good, if not better than some of the other guys that came before me that are now alums, that are great players, that are still playing professional now. I was like, why can't I get the chance now? So like, my, then the senior year came around. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, just, you know, trying to focus on graduating, internships and all that stuff. It's still kind of like, uh, maybe, might not happen, might happen. Still got to focus on finishing school, because, I mean, I came off a big season, so now I got to replicate that season and even do more, but my focus, In our senior season, I was like, I just want to win a championship at this point, whether I play bad, good, or average. That was the whole goal. So, yeah, you had pretty good. So, your junior season was when you, like, opened your eyes yeah, to see, like, that was when I was really, like, I can do this because the guys that did that in previous years that you played with, like, they made it. So, like, you're getting on, like, I make it. Okay, but I have a question for you, bro. I have a really interesting question. Interesting question. Why your celebrations are so bad? My celebrations... Because I'm so like I'm tired. gonna put here. I'm gonna ask the the people that add the video that it's me. But I'm gonna put a little goal, bro. Like your celebration. I don't know. Like you sometimes you score three goals like in a game, two goals in a game, and your celebration are the same. Like when I scored a goal, it was the only one in my <laughs> lifetime, bro. I took my shirt off. I yeah, celebrate yeah. like Ronaldo, like Messi, like everything. And sometimes you score like three goals in a game, and you're like. Listen, when you <laughs> score a lot of goals, then, you know, it all becomes the same. I'm Is it like lack like, of no. creativity? No, I'm tired. <laughs> After I score, it's, I'm tired and I don't have any other thing. So maybe I'll do a little quick celebration here and there and then that's it. Yeah, I remember. Right back to. Yeah, I remember. Well, to I think I remember like yeah. one game that we played was against USF here. Probably you scored. I think that game you scored a hat trick. Yeah, I scored a hat trick. And then I remember like there was one ball that you scored. And then, like, you're running, like, you're running, and you're, like, 1v1 gets the keeper, and you just, like, finish, like, between his legs, and you score. And then after you're just tired, you just, like, go to the stand, and you're, like... Yeah, I'm, like, hey, you <laughs> celebrate with the fans. But it, it, makes it, it makes it easier, to be honest. Not so what, what, was, what was, like, the most unforgettable, um, most unforgettable, is it, is it how you say in English? Most unforgettable, or... The, no. How do you say the, the unforgettable? I don't know. The game that you don't forget at all, like that you played, like the best game you're like, I'm I, never gonna forget this game that I played in. in, in. I, I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Hopefully people that are watching here, they, they, will, understand. they, they will understand too. I'll Maybe. put their subtitles. Maybe. <laughs> you're gonna need a lot of subtitles. Uh, I need a lot of subtitles. I need to hire somebody to do subtitles But for me. I would say the game that I would always remember. I would say I had two games. I would definitely put the USF game because I've never scored a hat trick. The game in my college career, good, yeah. and that was the first one. So I would definitely say that game, because we had so many fans too. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of. It was a, and it was a good game. I even scored a free kick that was sick, but they called it back. And I mean, Avante, could we could have easily made it like eight, I think that game. And what was what was that? Like it was against Bob too. Yeah, that yeah, was the for return coach. for Bob. So that was another just like big like add on to the game which so I got my first hat trick right when Bob leaves 
and actually I didn't even play that him the year before because I was like suspended kind of I just came on late in the second half so I didn't even get to really play against him that year so I was like you know he had me on the bench the freshman year and I felt like I could play more minutes so now it's time to show you what I've been working on in that game and then I would say our the USF game again USF. in the semis on the semifinal in the 2016 yeah that was a fun one too yeah that way I, I didn't score but just the game and stuff in general that was fun it was it was the game that you got, I remember like one one play that that was at USF right yeah that was at there was like second round in NCAA right NCAA yeah. and then it was the first game. round first round in NCAA I don't think we went to the second they've never been to the second round I think we went second round in North Carolina but Anyways, yeah, I remember that game was, was was a great game too. So, anyways, so what was one thing that, thinking back now in your career, like at four years at at college, at the Division One level, you didn't even expect to make pro or didn't even expect maybe you were like the sec after Albert, like Albert, you were oh, yeah. the highest score, the scorer at FGCU, second most points. Yeah. So how many goals you scored in four years? Twenty, right? I don't know. 23, 23 I think. Goals, yeah. And all right, so but anyway, so what is some, what is one thing that you said? So if I could come back in my four years, I would have done differently than what I did. What would be that thing? If I could have come back differently, uh, I don't yeah. know. It was an enjoyable four years. But if you said like, if I could leave it again, or I'll do everything like the same, or like I don't know, work harder, maybe you'd like. Focus more on school or like I don't know whatever. I don't regret anything I did for my That's school, good. but <laughs> I would say playing wise, I would take back last year against NJIT because we were so close. Uh, I mean, I was hurt the previous couple of games because of the Charlotte game. So if I could have just like been able to not have gotten injured at that point and be able to play because we lost here on senior night. So I would say probably playing on the senior night because I didn't get to play my senior night. And that was also the deciding factor of who won against NJIT here. So I would probably say getting to play in that game and at least maybe have an influence to change in that and then being healthy to play better in the finals, I would say. Uh, I have, an, I have another, another question for you. So what is, like, now you that you went to, you had an experience, like, with an MLS team, right? Yeah. You had an experience, like, with an MLS team. Now you went to, like, a USL League One team, which you, you've been doing, like, you did good. And you had an experience at the Division One level, too. So if you could say, like, what is the main difference or major difference that you see between, like, a Division One college level and, like, a profession? You can talk about a little bit about, like, MLS, who, of course, is, like, the highest level you could play in America. And also, like, other, other like, the other professional level, which is, like, USL. So what do, you, what do you think is the most, like, thing that differentiates one level to the other level? I would say the difference between college and the USL, there's not... A big big gap on schoolwork when you're in the USL your job is literally to make you yourself better pay, yeah. you would say you would make yourself it sounds weird because you're you would be a college and you're a player and you say okay I still have to get myself better but now your only focus is to make sure you perform better every single day every single practice because they're paying you to be like to be a great player. They don't want you to be an average player. They want you to be a great player every moment, every second. You have to be pretty much consistent and they just want you to be as perfect as you can be. And when the college level is like, you're still learning because you're still young. So you need to learn, you're still learning the style of play. You're still learning the speed, the pace, what you got to do to be success successful. Like, and you still have to balance out schoolwork at the same time. Yeah, like in college you're like a student yes. athlete, right? Why you're like in a so, professional level, you're an athlete. So it's not just like physical, it's also the mental just as much. Because now, say you're doing bad in school, that could affect you on the field. Just like if you're failing in class and they're like you're kicked off for the week, now you can't play or train with the team. So now you're losing days. But as a pro athlete, you don't lose days because you're training every single day unless you're hurt then you're just re rehabbing. But it's the same thing in college anyways. Yeah, I, rem I remember like Nico like was like probably like one of the greatest players I've played in college. Yeah, and Nico, yeah, Nico Samayo, like the guy got drafted, the guy got 
to play like in a, like MLS level, win like Guatemala, right? Like national team and everything. And I was talking to him one time, and he told me like he said, "Goose, uh, like playing college is fun." Yeah, like, I would say it's, fun. it's like, really it's fun. fun. Like you need to enjoy as much as you can because when you go to the professional level and you're making money to play, sometimes it's not that Less enjoyable. Fun. Because, like, you need to be such a high standard every day because if not, somebody's going to get in your place. And yeah, in, it's, in it's some way, like, yeah, it's a job. Like, it's a job. And, like, of course you enjoy it. It's not like, you know, yeah. get him saying, like, oh, my gosh, I got to go train. No, he enjoys going to training. But, like, the, the, the level of mentality of prof professionalism is something, like, so much higher yeah. than you don't have, like, a lot of gaps, a lot of, like, opportunities, I could say, to yeah. mess up while in college. Like, there is this understanding that, okay, you also are a student, so yeah. you also have, like, to devote your time to stuff like that, especially, like, in, in like, in NCAA, which you have, yeah. like, the 20-hour rule, like, 8-hour rule that you cannot, yeah. like, all coaches have limited amount with you, so you cannot develop as much because you have a, 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 a second commitment in the classroom as yeah. well, right? Which, which is, like, the idea, so you're student athlete, right? But that's something he told me. In my mind, that's something if I would come back. No, I think I did, like, pretty well, but... I'll just share with my team or share with people that play are playing college. Like, man, try to be a professional as much as you can. And like inside of your, say, yeah. yeah, inside of your but, like world. If you have class, right? But if you have the opportunity to use the facility to do it as a professional, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I would, but still have fun because you still have fun when exactly. you're in training and as a professional. You trust me. Some of the training sessions are not fun because you have to do everything perfect. And the coaches want you to be perfect. So, like, it's not – there's not much time for fun. So, like – but when you do have fun, you know, you're going to enjoy it. But, like, for college, I would say there, there's days you can have a whole week. Remember we, when we had our trainings? Before we would play a game, we're all laughing, joking, and we're still playing. 5v5, five five, come out, win a game. That, that, that was fun. But, like, you don't get that as a pro. That's like, bullshit. you don't – you can play five aside, and it's – serious in business because like there the is so time. many people like i remember when i was in brazil like playing, playing an academy it's like it's every day there's somebody trying to get your place yeah. you know what i'm saying like it's, every it's not day. like in college you have like 25 people like okay you get in the fall there's no way that somebody can can get like hired you can sign somebody or you yeah. can just like get away no like every day there's somebody trying to get in your place yeah you know what i'm saying like every day there's somebody trying to get in your position so it's, I remember when I was like 2016 before I got to college, I had an opportunity to be like with the Orlando City, like the first team. Yeah. And bro, wasn't like bro, I was having the MLS experience, but was was like so stressful. You know what I'm saying like yeah, well, the is, first time I was there, it's like really stressful. Like, playing as a like with a like a pro, like we got caught there, like best player in the world, like you know. And then you just like it's just it's just something that is college. I think you have more time to enjoy it, but at the same time, take as a profession as well. And, like, the friends, like, the friend aspect, too. Like, you don't make much friends. Like, you're not going to make many friends on your team. I mean, it's... Because when you're in college, you have your roommates. I mean, we, I had my roommates, too. But we also just got out of college. But all the older people, like, the guys with wives and, yeah. like, you have getting on to, like, the level of get, about to get married. Like, your relationship with them is literally go only going to be on the field. Your relationship outside of soccer is little little to do yeah, because like, like me and you will be roommates i can walk over say hi what's up those guys is just like hey what's up on the field good job see you tomorrow yeah That's i have it. my kid to take care of yeah i have my my kid to take care of i have to go back to my wife or if if it's us like hey let's go to sophie walk to sophie go eat let's go to the waterfront hey i'm coming over right now like that 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 type of fun too so that kind of plays on the field as well that's good that's good so that so the, what do you say about like the as the MLS aspect now because you had the experience that so what's something that you say like then is this really really like another level or is like oh my gosh like it's what is about the, the, the thing that stand out the most to you when you had the experience in Nashville the same thing consistency the consistency there is like really like some players don't try to be something they're not like a player's not going to try to be messy on the field, dribbling through five, ten players, being like making all these incredible passes. They can't. Their job is if they're a six, they'll just play here, there, 100% passing ready. I'm okay with that. The same thing with the like defenders. My goal is to defend. I, I'll let everybody else do whatever they want to do. But sometimes you see like with our teammates before like 
we're very good. So and they want to prove that they're very good. So they might do something that they're not that good at, and it'll come out like it's not going to come out the best. But we were actually very good to like, okay, we can fix it on the fly. But at the professional level, you cannot do that. You'll try to do it, and one, two, three passes, balls in the back of your net, and it's scary to even think about that because it's because I've been on the end of it when I was playing professional. Like the team would make a mistake, we go on the end, and just from training professionally like I've been getting more consistent all the time so as soon as we get another end boom I'm at the end of a goal or trying to get a shot off or something and it's like always dangerous where in college like you might not get that chance or it's somebody will miss a sitter from five yards away and then you're like I can take a break because we got lucky pros is you're not getting that lucky if it's on the six yard box it's going in, it's going in the net they get in the box it's going in the net so that was that was, I would say that's a big difference from the MLS. It's good, it's good, it's good. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes, you know, like, you, when you don't realize that, you try to do as much as you can. Like, yeah. you want to do a, a lot, you know, you what, do why the lot. simp is always the best. Like, the, the simple is always the best. Yeah, like, you, you'll realize that very quick. The simple, the simple you are, the better you get. The more you try to do things, you just look like you don't know what you're doing or you just look inexperienced. But the, the less you do is actually the better. The better, the better. Good. So, like, what what you what you are your for us to head to the end now? What are your like your plans going to the future now? For a guy that like five years ago, I could say it was like high school didn't even like thought that I was coming to college, and now like you're playing pro, like you had a pretty decent year, you know, like got drafted and, and stuff. So, what what are your plans in the future? What 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 are you thinking about it like going forward? Oh, right now, I don't even have an idea. I've been given multiple opportunities to go places, and it's whether I can get it 100% confirmed that I can do it, or if I get opportunities at a higher level. So right now, it's just, I mean, I'm injured still, so I'm just Taking trying to get, he yeah, get healthy until that opportunity comes. But... I've talked to a couple people and they've like gave me a couple ideas of what they think like based off of how they think I'm how good I am and where I can go if they see me in this places. But time will only tell. Good, right good, now. good. Yeah, so hopefully I can go up next year and like I don't I don't want to stay in Tucson personally just because I want to go to the next division and play like at a higher level each each year until I can get to the MLS or wherever else so do you play do you play overseas is it like a desire that you have like Brazil maybe not <laughs> Brazil I actually used to want to play in Brazil yeah, but not after the, <laughs> no no my dream after the, the, I remember I was like 10 my dream was like I want to play with Santos Santos that was my with team. Neymar yeah but. yeah I was like I want to play there no it wasn't because of Neymar it was because of Robinho Robinho okay. Robinho played there and I was like I want to go where he's going <laughs> so what go was your what was your favorite Brazilian player that you were Robinho Robinho was my favorite player ever Robinho for real Robinho for real even more than like I don't know Robinho I don't care like that. Messi it doesn't matter Ronaldo even Big Ronaldo. Big Ronaldo. No, it is Rubinho. Rubinho. Rubinho was my favorite player Robinho, ever. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, so, he was so good. Yeah, the pedaladas, I don't know, like, you know, the thing that he, he was doing. Uh, yeah, yeah. But anyways, all right, bro. So, last thing I wanted to say, looking at the camera, because a lot of people that actually, like, that's the first thing I'm doing in English now, because all my stuff I do yeah. in Portuguese, but now I'm challenging myself to go, like, get this content to more people and get experience because if I was doing Portuguese you'd not be able to share your story you know what I'm saying so That's now true. I want you to look at the camera and tell to people that like want to come to the US to play college and people that are in the US in like in high school or want to transfer like to a D1 level or aim to be a professional what would you say to them for us to end looking at the camera what would I say to them yeah like as an advice of like somebody that is experienced you know score a lot of goals in division one like got drafted and and so on I would say make the most of your opportunities. Take, take the risks, take the chances that you might not get back. I uh, work extremely hard, as hard as you can every single day because just think about someone behind you is just working just as hard. True. So keep working, set big goals. So if you set an extreme goal that might be out of reach that if something falls back, then it's just as good. So that's all I got. Thanks, Shaquin Adams. Thanks for 
being the first participant, <laughs> participant, 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 or the first guest. That's easier to say. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember like when first people, guest. people, I was there was we when we were freshmen, and like you had this guy like the Dante, he would come to me and like ask me questions for me to say words. You know, and like I needed to say words, and he said like, "I'll say the word world," and I'll just say like "planet Earth" or something like that, because I didn't know how to say the the word. You know, there are so many words that I didn't know how to say. You remember yeah. some of them? No, I remember when we had the time. We you would tell us the stuff, the movies and the TV shows. You would translate it back to us. Oh, like, the movie! English, yeah, the movie. You say uh, the Fresh Prince, the the crazy guy in the area. <laughs> yeah. So because like that's something crazy. So like in Portuguese. Like, the way they get the thing in Portuguese and they translate to... Like, or the opposite. They get the thing in English because it's originally in English and they just translate <laughs> to Portuguese. Exactly. It's so crazy. Like, for example, Hangover. You know the movie Hangover? Yeah. Hangover. The way that they translate it to Portuguese is like, if you get drunk, don't get married. Is that what it That's is? That's how it is. Like, oh, if you don't get married, if you don't get drunk. Something like that. Oh, my gosh. So, like, imagine <laughs> coming to your... Have you watched, like, if you get married, don't get drunk? Because, like, it's completely... For example, you know, like, yeah, the... Yeah. The movie, the Christmas movie, was called like uh, Home Alone. Oh yeah, Home Alone. So like the, how the way they say Home Alone in Portuguese is like imagine like in a movie theater say like they forgot me. So that's oh. the name of the movie. They forgot me, which makes sense if you know the <laughs> but, story of the movie. But there is one of them is like they actually did forget them. Huh? One of them. No. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. There was a Home Alone, but I don't remember. It was like the Christmas one, and he actually did. They actually did. I know, no, but that's the name of the movie. <laughs> like the name of the movie is "They Forgot Me," like in Portuguese. I so, mean, it's close. I mean, it's close, but like it's weird. Like man, like it's the name funny. is Home Alone. So like I don't know, just find a word or translate. Like you know, for example, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Like the first one, like one of my favorite like shows yeah. to watch, you know, like when I was younger. So it's like the craziest guy in the area, which makes sense because it's the craziest oh, yeah. guy in the area. Was crazy. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Shaq, thank you, and thank you for you that watch it or are listening to us also in, in Spotify or in YouTube or Instagram, whatever you're watching this. Thank you. If you liked, give us a like, subscribe here in the channel, and just share this interview with your friend if you like it. Thank you, and I see you in next episode.